Welcome back to a new episode where I want to create a working context form in PHP. Let's create a new folder and let's call it contact. And inside my contact folder, I need a couple of files. First off, I need an index.php. I need a style sheet, so style.css. And I need a new file with the name contact.php. So let's start off with our index.php. Let's create our HTML tags. So let's write down doc, hit tab. Let's go right inside our body tags where I actually want to create a context form using HTML. In the style.css, I want to style my context form. In the contact.php, I actually want to start working on the backend of the context form. So let's start off by creating our context form first. So let's create a div tag. And inside my div tag, I want the h1 tag. And let's write down get in touch. And underneath my h1 tag, let's create a paragraph tag. And let's write down please fill in the fields. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and let's go into our contact folder. And well, this works. So right now, let's create a form. The action is equal to contact.php. We need a method that needs to be set equal to post. And let me zoom in. Inside our contact form, we want to create a couple input fields that we want from the user. So let's write down input, hit tab. The first one has a type which is equal to text. It has a name equal to name. And it has a placeholder which is equal to full name. So instead of using labels in front of the input field, I want to use placeholders. And the placeholder specifies a short hint that describes the expected value of an input field. So if I save it and refresh it, you can see that the placeholder of my input field is full name. And if I click on it and write some text, our placeholder disappears and you can see that whatever we have inputted appeared on the screen. So let's copy our input field and paste it two more times. So we also want the email of a user and the placeholder is equal to email. And we also want the subject. So name is equal to subject and placeholder is equal to subject. So what we need to create now is a text area tag. So let's go right below our input field. Let's type text area, hit tab. And we actually don't need the ID columns and rows. So let's remove them. We need a name, which is equal to message. And we need a placeholder, which is equal to enter message. Let me make it bigger. So let's save it and refresh it. And while it looks pretty bad right now, but just give me a moment and let's create a button tag with a type equal to submit because we want to submit the form and the name equal to submit. And in between our button tags, let's write down, sub, well, not submit, send email. So let's save it and refresh it. And well, it looks awful right now. So what I want to do is to style it a little bit. And I won't be explaining what the styling actually means because that's not part of my PHP scope. But well, I cannot work with a form that looks like this. So first off, we need to create a link tag in our head. So right below our title, let's create a link. And the rel is equal to style sheet. The type is equal to text forward slash CSS. And the href is equal to style dot CSS. Since we already created our style.css, let's open it and let's start styling our form. The first thing that I want to style is the div. I want to set a margin of zero auto and I want to text align everything. Well, this went wrong. Text align everything in the center. So we created an h1 tag and I want the margin to be zero. So let's save it and refresh it. And we created the paragraph tag where I want the font size to be 14. This looks a little bit better. So let's start styling our form. Let's say that I want the margin to be zero auto as well. I want the text align to be in the center, nothing's changing. And I want the padding to be 20 pixels top 
and the rest needs to be zero. All right. So next, I want to style the input field. So let's write down input, and the width needs to be 200 pixels. The display needs to be blocked because, well, I don't want to have them next to each other. This looks quite a lot better right now. I want to the I want the margin to be 20 pixels top bottom and the rest well left right to be auto. I want a box shadow of 0, 0, 10 pixels and the color needs to be well black. I need a border which is one pixel solid and the color is F2, F2, F2. I need a background color of my input field which is also equal to F2, F2, F2. And I want a padding of four pixels. So let's save it, refresh it, and this looks a little bit better, right? So let's style our placeholder real quick with, well, column, column, placeholder. And I want the text transform to be uppercase, so I don't want it to be lowercase anymore. I want the font size to be eight pixels. And I want the font weight to be bold. Save it, refresh it, and this looks better. So let's create our input field, paste it, and let's change input to text area. And let's add a height of 100 pixels. Save it, refresh it, and it starts to look pretty good. And the last thing that I want to style is the button. I want the width to be 80 pixels. I want the height to be 40, save it, refresh it, while well, the width needs to be 120, yes. I want the background color to be black, and I want the, well, text color to be white. Save it, refresh it, and this looks a lot better than what we had. So now that we've done styling, I want to work on the back end of the form. So let's close off our style.css and let's open our contact.php. And remember, in our index.php, we did set the action of our form to contact.php. So let's go to our contact.php, create PHP opening and closing tags. And inside our PHP tags, let's create an if statement. Because just like in the previous videos, we need to check if the button is actually submitted. And since our method is equal to post, we need to say is set, and it's a function, so we need parentheses to the super global post, and we want to check for submit. So whenever the submit button is clicked and the method is equal to post, do something. So what we need to do right now is to create variables and set them equal to the input fields. So we have a name, so variable name is equal to variable post brackets variable name and whenever i work with contact forms or login systems i like to use a function called trim so let's go right in front of our super global let's write down trim bracket and a closing bracket after the post method and what trim does is it removes the white space and other predefined characters from the left and the right side of a string so let's go outside of my php tags and let's say that the user fills in, well, the full name with a couple spaces. And let's say something like this. And what Trim basically does is it removes all the white spaces in front of your name or, well, after your name. And what we just did right here needs to be done with the email. So the second one, the subject, and the message. So let's change the variables to email, third one to subject, and one for message. And we need to change the post, well, what we're looking for in our pet post super global as well. So the second one is email, third one is subject, and the last one is message. And I actually like to keep the names equal to each other. So the variables that I'm creating needs to be equal to the name of our input field. So in order for us to send the email, we need a function called mail. So let's go right below our variables and write down mail. And inside our mail functions, we need three params. So let me add them as a comment. First one is the email you're sending it to. The second one is the subject. And the third one is the message. There are a couple more params that you could add, but I want to focus on one more, which is called a header. 
So let's go right below our variables that we created. And let's create a new variable called my mail. This is the mail where we are actually going to send it to. So param1. And my email is info at darinazar.com. And you need to put in your own email. But you need to be aware that if you want to send it to a Gmail, Google will actually block your email function. So what we need to do now is to create a variable called header right below my mail function. And this basically consists of extra information. So basically the email what I'm sending it to, and you can also add your CCs at right here. But what is pretty important if you're creating something like this is to show the email of the person who is sending it. So let's say in double quotes, from, colon, and let's concatenate our variable email. We need one more, and that's actually the message. So let's create a new variable called message2. And what we want to do with our message2 variable is to create a customized message when an email is sent to us. So let's say that we want to email, you have received a message from, and what we want to do now is to concatenate it from name. So let's go outside our double quote, write down variable name, and we want to concatenate it from a punctuation mark. Now, well, after a punctuation mark, we want to go on on a separate line and not on the same. So what we need to do is to add a backslash n, backslash n. So the first one goes on one line below. So let me write it down for you. You have received a message from. So if we use one n, it will go on one line below. But if we use two, it will be on two lines below. And this looks a little bit better. And what we want to do in this line is to add a message. And the message is the one the user has input in our text area. So let's add variable message. So the last thing that we need to do is to fill in our mail function. And the first param is the email you're sending it to, which is equal to variable my mail. Second one is the subject. So it's variable subject. The third one is, well, the actual message that we want to send, so message to. And the last one is the header. And this is actually what we need to create a working contact form. But the problem right now is that if we want to fill in the form, so let's test it out. Let's say that my name is Dari, email is, well, my other email, subject is hello. And the message is, my name is Dari. Let's send the email. And the problem is that we're being redirected to an empty page. So what we need to do now is right below our mail function is to use a function called header. And inside our parentheses, we need double quotes. We want to write down location, colon. And this is basically where we want to be sent to. So I want to be redirected, well, to the same page. So let's say index.php. And I want to give a message if the email is sent or not. So let's say question mark, mail sent. So let's save it. Go back. Let's send it again. And you can see in our URL, index.php, question mark, mail sent. So this actually worked. But the problem right now is that we're not getting any messages because we are working on our local host right now. You can change your php.ini file, but that's pretty difficult to do. And what I want to do is to upload it to my own website so I can test it out. Well, I actually got it open. So let me go to my website, index.php. Let's say my name, my email, the subject is contact form, and the message is my name is Dari. So let's send it. You can see, well, the message is sent. And I just received an email. Let me show you what the output is. Let me go right here. And you can see that you have received a message from Dari Nazar. And my name is Dari. This was it for this episode. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.